Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles Now. Our preview video is coming up in just one second. First, we are presented by our friends at BetQL. Go to chatsports.com forward slash EaglesQL forward slash. Use their discount code CHATEAGLES for 25% off any of their subscription offerings. All right, let's jump into a preview, a week seven preview. Already week seven. Crazy how fast the NFL season always goes. And this time, we are in Vegas, actually the city I was born in. Fun fact, to take on the Las Vegas Raiders. And this is a very interesting match because on paper, two and four versus is four and two. You think the Raiders are going to be heavy favorites in this one, and yet being at home, they're only three point favorites, and it's kind of making you go, okay. I think Vegas, in terms of the odds makers, thinks that Vegas is a little bit of an iffy football team right now, and Philadelphia has a chance to go in there and pick up what is a must-needed win. I mean, we talk about, I think each of the last three weeks I've said this is a must-win for Philadelphia, going back to the Dallas Cowboy week, and so, well, I'll keep saying that. I mean, it's kind of hyperbole to keep, you know, addressing it, but it does feel like a must-win because two and four, or two and five, rather, versus three and four is a massive, massive difference, but I think that there are some good indicators and good trends to go ahead and show why Philadelphia has a chance to go ahead and win this football game. And I think if they're able to pull this one out, it can really kickstart the remainder of their schedule, which we've talked about on the channel, is the easiest remaining schedule according to ESPN's FPI and according to strength of record based on what we've seen so far through the first six weeks of the NFL season. Now, the first big thing to note in this game is Miles Sanders. I am feeling very, very good about Miles Sanders this week for, a, you know, a, a, let's just say a plethora of reasons, right? First off, both of the coaches in terms of Shane Steichen and uh, head coach, um, excuse me, and the head coach for the Philadelphia Eagles in terms of Nick Sirianni, both said this week that Miles Sanders needs to get more touches. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean he's going to get 10 touches, 15 touches, 20 touches? I don't know. But when you look at what the Raiders have done defensively against rushing football teams the past six weeks, they give up 100 yards of rushing to every single team that they have played so far this year, except for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That was the one game where the Steelers or the opposing team did not have over 100 yards rushing. This past week, they played the Broncos and beat the Broncos. However, the Broncos had over 100 yards rushing as Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon, their two headed monsters combined for 50 yards apiece. That makes it over 100 yards, throwing Teddy Bridgewater's two scrambles, and you get right about 112 rushing yards. I think that this will be the Miles Sanders game. Now, I've said this the past couple of weeks, like this week will be the Miles Sanders week. This week will be the Miles Sanders week. No, if there ever was a week for it to be the Miles Sanders week, this is the week it's going to be the Miles, Miles Sanders week. And I'm talking about 20 touches. I think he needs 20 touches in this game, over 100 yards, and we all kind of go, oh my gosh. Where has this been? And when we go, let's go. Thank you. Finally, we're getting a good running game going up against the Raiders. You need it, obviously, to have a little balance on offense. The Eagles have not had that so far this season. And just to go ahead and get the fans off of your back. If you're Nick Sirianni, why wouldn't you want to run the football a bunch? Because if it doesn't work, you can sit back and say, hey, this is why I haven't been running the football. See, see. Or if it does work, you say, hey, I ran the football. I listened to you guys. It's a win-win for him either way. So I'm hoping he's going to start running the football. I think that this is the game, the, 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 the combination of them saying that they will run the football more. They should be running the football more. And the fact that the Raiders are a bad rushing defense means that this could be the week to go ahead and insert Miles Sanders into your starting fantasy lineup. Because I know a lot of you guys have been riding him on the bench because he's been doing nothing the first six weeks of the season. Okay, pin comment down below during the ad break. Answer this question. Over, under, 50 rushing yards for Sanders on Sunday. O for over, you for under. Gotta be over, right? I'm gonna go O for over. Let's hope that it is. Give me your thoughts down below. Now, when taking on the Raiders, you look at the Raiders' offense, it's a very good offense. And you I remember going into the season talking about the Raiders in terms of just like, what do you think the Raiders are going to do this year? And I'm like, well, not very sold on Derek Carr. I don't know if they have enough weapons on the outside. Like, I like Henry Ruggs. He's kind of fun, Darren Waller. And yet this year, Derek Carr has been really, really good. He was great last week again in the game that I thought the Raiders were going to lose due to the fact they've had a John Gruden, you know, fiasco internally. And yet Derek Carr, against a very capable Denver Bronco defense, had, what, 18 completions, 341 yards, and two touchdowns no picks like he has been a really really good quarterback and so you have to take that into account when previewing this game because the Eagles secondary as we know has not been that good like the cornerbacks in terms of Darius Slay and, and Steven Nelson have been good but overall the secondary has struggled mightily to slow down people Tom Brady obviously balled out against them early on in that game and so you have your work cut out for you in order to try to go ahead and slow down this offense obviously Darren Waller is someone to keep an eye on in this game I think it was Darius Slay who said this week that you got to treat Waller like a wide receiver even though he lines up at tight end and is a tight end the guy's a physical freak. I think this is a massive, massive matchup and a really good opportunity for hopefully Jonathan Gannon to show us that he has changed a little bit in terms of the defensive play calling and can make in-game adjustments in order to not let the Raiders, much like the Bucks did in the first half last week, march down the football field each and every possession. 
All right, we'll get into uh, the Lane Johnson update and the rest of the Eagles offensive line here in a second because we have good news on that first. Again, Matt, we all, I want to mention our for our friends and sponsor this video at BetQL. This thing called the Best Bets Computer Model, which scans over 350,000 unique bets every single year to give you their best recommendations every single week. And so I'd use that, but I can give you my picks of the week, which I'll show you in a second here. But you can join the BetQL, I'm going to call it gang, because we have do, or the BetQL army, because we are very, very strong in terms of winning money this year. I'm using BetQL to go ahead and and do that. Go to chatsports.com forward slash Eagles QL forward slash get started now. Use this code chat Eagles at payment for 25% off any of their subscription offerings. So my picks of the week, very simple. And again, I'm 18 and 10 so far this year, which I continue to pat myself on the back because using BetQL, they have really gotten me over the hump in terms of not just breaking even, but winning a lot of money here so far this year. Panthers minus three at the Giants. I think the Panthers are going to roll the Giants, even though Carolina has been a little iffy the past couple of weeks. Washington plus 10 at Green Bay. I think Washington at least covers in that game, although Green Bay going with some throwback jerseys going to look sweet in that one. Falcons minus two and a half at the nightmare that are the Dolphins. Are they going to trade for uh, Deshaun Watson? Are they not? Either way, Tua is not going to be good in this game, giving me the Falcons. I am betting the Eagles plus three in this one. I think they're going to beat the Raiders, as I'll give you my score prediction later on. And the Bengals plus six at the Ravens. I think the Bengals are a better football team than people are giving them credit. And I think Baltimore is due for a loss here. So I'm going to go against my against my gut and go with my head and take the Bengals over the Ravens. All right, let's jump into Lane Johnson here really, really quickly because he was at practice yesterday in a limited capacity. The report are suggesting he should be good to go to play on Sunday. Now, we won't know until later on this week, and so you might be watching this on a Friday or Saturday and say, Thomas said he's going to play, and now my Twitter says he's not, and so all we know is that it looks like he's going to go ahead and play, which is good news for Philadelphia because the Raiders' defensive line is scary good. Like, they're one of the best pass-rushing football teams in the National Football League, despite the fact that you know, Cle Cleveland Farrell, their first-run draft a couple of years ago, hasn't really done much. But this Max Crosby has been absolutely fantastic rushing the passer for the Raiders. And he's going to be going up against, likely, Lane Johnson. So the hope now is that with Mylotta back at his normal left tackle spot and Johnson back at right tackle, the offensive line can kind of settle back into what it was doing early on this year. They were really, 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 really good early on, even without Brandon Brooks and without Isaac Samalo. I think Dickerson and Irving have filled in admirably. And I think that this can be a very good opportunity to slow down the better part of that Raider defense, which is... Of course, the uh, which is of course I would say the front four. What's your confidence level in the Eagles going into this game on Sunday from a scale of one to ten? Like, where are you at? I'm feeling good. Like, I don't know why. Like, I feel really good about this game. I think the Eagles have a really good chance to win. My confidence level, though, is at a seven. As long as they run the football, I think they have a chance to go ahead and get that dub. Give me your confidence level down below right now. Now, I mentioned earlier that I had my picks of the week, and we're putting those picks in uh, on the website at BetMGM to go ahead and you know put the picks down and then cash out with the winnings as well. And you guys can sign up for uh, BetMGM as well. We'll go to chatsports.com forward slash Eagles MGM forward slash to create your account. And we'll also throw in a free year of BetQL with your first $10 deposit and bet. And so it's a so great offer that BetMGM is doing right now. So you, again, sign up with our link. It's down below in the description box. Deposit the $10 into your account. Bet the $10. bucks. you receive a free year of BetQL within 24 hours of your wager settling. Okay, before we get into my keys to the game, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel. We have a mailbag video coming up a little bit later on this week. And so, if you want to get in on our mailbag video, uh, we will go ahead and take all of your possible mailbag questions in the uh, comment section of this video and the video yesterday. So subscribe to the channel. Just hit 21,000 subs. Make sure you guys go down below uh, and join us as we are 21,000 plus strong and growing every single day. All right, keys to the game here. Let's just jump right into it. Number one, let's keep the offense on the field. This has been a problem for Philadelphia. On key drives, when they get down 7-0 or they get down 10-3, like they need to go ahead and convert on third down. And they've had a lot of three and outs. You saw a couple of those uh, in the early parts of the Bucks game last week. Keep the offense on the field. Get some rhythm going and give the defense a break because the defense is going to be on the field for a long time anyway because they're not very good. Keep the offense on the football field. Let's go down the field and actually score, which is you know easier said than done, but it's must. Uh, it's necessary going forward here in this season. Number two re-establish Devontae Smith. He was not really targeted in the Bucks game last week. Only two catches against what was Richard Sherman and then injured Richard Sherman. It was the worst part of the Bucks secondary. I remember my preview last week was, you know, attack the Bucks secondary, and they really didn't try and get the football to Devontae Smith. He's had a really good year. He is open. I mean, work his way. Work his direction. We've seen Jalen Rager struggle, and so I'm not necessarily, you know, keen to throw his way. Let's re-establish Devontae Smith. Get those seven to eight targets, seven to eight catches this week. Again, what is a very, let's just say it, weak Raider secondary that you can go ahead and hopefully expose with your young wide receiver. 
Number three, I said I'd say this every single week until they, until they actually did it, so I'll say it again. Run the damn ball, like every single week. We keep saying, run the ball, get the ball in Miles Sanders' hands. I don't, have to, I don't have to explain why we need to do this. I've said it earlier. Run the football, pound the rock. Hopefully, they're able to do that. That's key number three. Number four, we talked about the Raider offense earlier. They're very explosive. They're one of the most explosive offenses in the National Football League. Henry Ruggs can get behind a defense. You worry about him a lot, and of course, a guy like Darren Waller. I mean, this is a very, very scary good offense that can score at any given time and is one of the top five in the league in big plays. And so the Eagle defense needs to go ahead and not allow any of the explosive plays and get off the football field to allow the Eagle offense to hopefully have long drives and sustained drives down into the end zone. Um, n- number five, and the final one here, which really should be said every single week, let's call a Jalen friendly game. And by Jalen friendly game, I mean put Jalen Hurts in position to be successful. Like, call some runs. And I like that Jalen Hurts runs on the RPOs. I think he's done a really good job, especially in the red zone, of keeping the football and rushing into the end zone. But also, call plays that make it easy for him to be successful. There are some drives where you go, that looks really easy for, for Jalen Hurts. And some drives where you go, that looked really, really hard. Like, make it very, very simple. Make it easy and let Jalen Hurts be himself and also run the football where you can help him out the way that the offense can have a lot of success early on. Okay, my prediction, it's simple. I am taking the Eagles. I said I was going to bet the Eagles. I have done that. Uh, I put my $10 a week, as I always do. Uh, Eagles 27, Raiders 24. Close football game here. Late kickoff. I do think Philadelphia gets it done. And guess what? They need to. Backs against the wall. 10 days rest coming off the loss on Thursday night. they got to get a win here uh, on the road against the Raiders. Give me your score prediction down below right now in the comments section. Again, I say Eagles 27, Raiders 24. I want to see your score predictions down below right now. Of course, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. As I mentioned earlier, we have plenty of great content coming up in the next couple of days and weeks, including our mailbag video tomorrow. And so if you want to be a part of that, be sure to subscribe and get your questions in now. All the time we have for, the we have for today on our Eagles preview video, hopefully they're able to get a win. We're going to find out on Sunday and, of course, break it down on Monday here on the channel. For Philadelphia Eagles now, I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off for the rest of your day.